Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of the par yield, which in my opinion is one of the harder ideas in the set of yield metrics. I'm going to try and show that the par yield is just a particular type of yield to maturity. It's the yield to maturity that prices the bond at par. So to illustrate that, I've got some assumptions as usual. Face value of the bonds is 100. And then the key input assumption here is the spot rate curve, also called the zero rate curve. By input assumption, that means I just put these in. There's no formulas. And they're, it's, they're exaggerated. It's a steep curve. And it's illustrated over here on the right. Also zoomed in here on the chart, cut off at 5% just in order to illustrate the dip, to really zoom in on the differences. Here is that spot rate or zero rate curve that I've illustrated or input. You can see it's upward sloping, three, five, seven, nine over four years. You may, you may know there's an infinite number of these, but this is the fundamental building block in academic finance because we use this to price cash flow instruments. There's an infinite number, one for each gradation of risk, at the bottom is the theoretical spot rate curve where we might use treasuries to bootstrap the um, zero rate or zero coupon yield curve for riskless instruments. But there's one for each gradation of risk. So I've got here a risky one. And corresponding to that would be the set of discount factors. We have one discount factor for each maturity. The set of those together is called the discount function. And so, for example, the discount factor at three years, in the case of annual compounding, by the way, I don't usually use annual compounding. It's not as realistic. The reason I'm doing it here is not to complicate the example. So annual compounding is here is just a simplification so that I don't confuse this with also compound frequency. But so in this case, the three year discount factor under annual compounding is just one divided by one plus my three year spot rate of 7%. So you can see that's 1.07 raised to the third power gives me point 816, that's the three year discount factor. And here's the four year discount factor. Again, it, trans it translates the four year spot or zero rate into a multiplier. And you may know the elegance of the discount function or the set of discount factors is that I can just use those as multipliers. They already contain the information of which compound frequency is used. So, a real nice feature of those. So, now I come down and we can look at the par yield, which is just one of the yield to maturities. So I start here with a 4% coupon bond. And so here's the set of future cash flows. This bond pays $4, $4, $4 in year three, and then in year four, a $4 coupon plus the return of par. And then I can use the discount factors to price this bond. So in this case here for the first year, my $4 coupon is multiplied by my one year discount factor, gives me a present value of $3.88. Same thing for the two year cash flow. And I end up converting my future stream into a stream of present value cash flows, the summation of which is the price of the bond. In this case, 84.45, is the price for a 4% annual coupon bond, assuming this spot rate curve. Now also, let me take this out real quick. Also, I can compute the yield. Also, the longer name for that is the yield to maturity. We typically just say yield. The yield doesn't have a formula, it's iterative, but if we're using Excel, we can use a function of the rate function here. I'm not going to go into the rate function except to say it's telling us the rate is the yield is 8.78%. What does that mean? Well, that means I can discount these bonds cash flows like this first one at $4. Instead of discounting at the spot rate, I'm going to discount here at the yield of 8.78. And notice though, the difference here is I'm going to discount all of the cash flows at the same yield. So even that one out here at four years is going to discount at the same yield. And so if you look at the graph here, this $4% coupon, the, its yield is graphed or illustrated by this uh, darker 
green line. Notice it's horizontal because the yield is implicitly flat. It, and if I've taken all these cash flows, discounted them at the yield instead of at, the, at their respective spot rates, if I summarize these, they equal the same price. So the yield is that discount rate I can use in all the cash flows that gives me the price of the bond. And so it's definitely different from the spot rate curve, but it's a single number. So it impounds the information in the spot rate curve. So that's my yield, 8.78. And then I can quickly do a visual check. When my coupon is lower than my yield, my bond does need to be priced at a discount. So now I've got a yield on a 4% coupon bond. I've also got down here to the bottom a 15% coupon. Again, I've exaggerated some of these assumptions to illustrate the idea. The 15% coupon bond, here's its future cash flows, prices out if I discount them at the spot rate curve, with the spot rate curve, I get a price of 121.88. And then if I compute the yield, I happen to get 8.34%. Now the 15% coupon bond is graphed by the brighter green line down here. You can see 8.34%. It is different than, lower than, the yield on the 4% coupon bond. But again, as the same principle, if I then now go and reprice this bond with the yield, in other words, discount each of the, discount all of the cash flows at the same yield, summarize those, I'm going to get this same price of 121.88. So for the 15% coupon bond, this bright green line flat is consistent with the spot rate curve and in a way impounds the information into a single number. But it's different from the yield on a 4% coupon bond, which tells us something that's very interesting, I think. The yield is largely a function of the spot rate curve but it's also a function of the instrument. So in other words, we could have a technically infinite number of yields depending on the coupon as the coupon goes up or down. And that is in fact why we tend to have and use a par yield because it would be somewhat arbitrary to pick uh, one of these. To, we, whenever we say yield, we'd have to specify the coupon. The par yield is just the one of those that is not as arbitrary as the other, and it's illustrated right here in the middle. Now, there happens to be a formula for it. That I'll put this on the blog, and I'll put the spreadsheet um, on, on the web blog as well, or the blog entry if you'd like to take a look. But here's the formula for it. It's actually not too difficult to show the derivation of that. It's 1 minus this final discount factor divided by the sum of the discount factors. Okay, so there is a formula to compute it, but it can also be iterated. But again, it's just one of the yield to maturities. In this case, it's 8.57%. What does that mean here? This par yield means this is the one yield to maturity that would price this bond to par and therefore would also equal the coupon. Well, we'll call up here, coupon lower than yield, pr price must be at a discount. Up over here, coupon higher than yield, price must be at a premium. Here is the one sweet spot where the yield equals the coupon and the bond is priced at par and that is what the par yield means. So if this is an 8.5% coupon bond, here would be those cash flows. I price those first with the spot or zero rate curve, I get a price of 100 or par. Also, the 8.57, if I discount these cash flows at all of the same yield of 8.57%, I also get the price of the bond equal to par. So it's illustrated here by the purple line right in the middle. And so that way, when we specify the par yield, we know that means, okay, that's the coupon rate that would price this that would price this bond at par and would equal, therefore, the same yield. This is David Harper, The Bonic Turtle. Thanks for your time.